Hey guys, this is Drackel, and uh, today I thought I'd look at mob spawning. How mobs spawn in the game. Um, now, I did not code the game or anything like that. I am not an expert on, on Jobber or anything, but I have done quite a bit of research into this and uh, hopefully can clear up a few things. Now, I guess we should get started by uh, with the basics. You have your hostile and passive mobs, and they behave differently, and they also spawn a little bit differently. And of course, mobs are all different sizes, so they all have different spawn requirements, uh, some of them at least. Alright, so let's get started by looking at what types of blocks that mobs can spawn on. Well, obviously we have our cobblestone, we have our dirt. Uh, they can spawn on just about any type of block, uh, with a few exceptions. Mobs cannot spawn on translucent blocks, so glass, for instance. A mob cannot spawn on this glass. They also cannot spawn on ice, because that is also translucent, and they obviously can't spawn on uh, water. And another interesting thing, mobs cannot spawn on half blocks, so these slabs. Mobs cannot spawn on these. And that allows you to do something like this. This is a 7x7 seven seven spawning pad that I use in my hostile system. Um, and these uh, half slabs prevent spiders from spawning at all in the system. Because um, spiders, uh, as you know, they're only one tall, but they are four wide. So they need four spawnable blocks uh, around them in order to spawn. And obviously these uh, slabs prevent that from happening. Uh, a few miscellaneous items that we've tested. Mobs can spawn on torch blocks. Yes, if you put a torch down, the mob can spawn right on top of it. Um, they can spawn on pressure plates. Um, they can spawn uh, on a whole bunch of different things. Uh, I'm not quite sure about minecart rails or repeaters, but uh, I I'll have to look into that. I know they can spawn on redstone, they can spawn on wool, and all sorts of things that go on top of the block. Alright, so as we all know, lighting affects the spawning of mobs, but you might not know to what degree it does. Um, obviously, uh, hostile mobs cannot spawn unless it is level 7, light level 7 or below. And as you can see, I have a light meter mod, which is very useful. Um, I think I'll link it in the description. Um, I am standing on a block that is level 7. As you can see, if I remove uh, the smooth lighting feature, oops, um, like so, now you see all the different blocks and how they're lit. And as you can see uh, from the torches, it gets darker and darker and darker as you go along. Um, and here we have level 7. So a hostile mob could spawn here. It is the lowest, uh, well, the highest amount of light possible for a bad mob to spawn. Um, however, with light levels, uh, even though light level 7 they can spawn, uh, the mobs prefer to spawn in lower amounts of light. Uh, so if you have a room lit at light level 7 and then a room right next to it of the same size lit at light level 0, the hostile mobs will spawn much more often in the light level 0 room. So keep that in mind. Um, that's why you have to have your dark rooms and your traps as dark as possible. Uh, zero, or uh, I guess you can't get better than zero, but uh, you definitely don't want to uh, be above zero if you can help it. No torches. Uh, if you use lava blades, cover them up. That kind of stuff. Now the kind of the opposite is true for um, passive mobs. You know the farm animals and whatnot. Uh, from what I can tell, from my testing, the farm animals, they I know they will spawn in darkness or in light. They'll spawn uh, in either one. However, they prefer to spawn in lighter areas. Um, from what I can tell, 8 or above, light level 8 or above. Um, they will spawn in darkness, however. But, from like I said, from my testing, they seem to spawn more when it's lighter. Um, it used to be before a patch a while back that the passive mobs would only spawn in uh, in lighted conditions, but now they'll they'll spawn in complete darkness as well. All right, so we're up here at my passive mob spawning system to sh to demonstrate the uh, mob exclusion zone. What is the mob exclusion zone? Well, as you can see, four pigs just spawned, and you might be wondering why all the mobs seem to be spawning on the farthest pads from me. Well, that's because of the exclusion zone. Now. 
in a radius of 24 blocks that way, 24 blocks that way, and 24 blocks up and down. No mobs can spawn. Um, it prevents, you know, like a creeper from spawning right next to you and blowing you up, basically. And that's the same rule for all mobs. They can't, they can't spawn within that sphere of you. So that that's important to note, especially when you're making uh, mob systems. You can't have the loot collector uh, within 24 blocks of any of the spawning pads, and that's horizontally and vertically. So that's that's definitely something you have to take into account when you're designing a mob system. Now, getting into details, the game world is divided into what are called chunks, and chunks are 16 blocks wide by 16 blocks long by 128 blocks tall meaning they go all the way from bedrock all the way up to the very top of the sky. Now, the number of chunks that are loaded, if, if I'm stationary standing right here, um, it's going to be 17 by 17 chunks uh, in single player. Um, so it's a total of, what, uh, 289 chunks, I think, total. And what, what does that mean? Well, that means... Uh, that the game uh, is active in a 128 block radius in all directions of you, basically. And what is that? What I mean by active? I mean active as in uh, crops growing and mobs spawning, basically, is uh, what's happening within that radius of you. And it also happens not only in a horizontal radius but in a vertical radius as well. So I'm gonna we're gonna take a look at that uh, in a sec when it turns back to day. All right, so we're out here in this area. So I haven't really um, closed down many of the caves out here yet. That's kind of what I want to show. Now, right now, I'm playing on a on peaceful. So you can see in the top left uh, corner we have uh, a bunch of numbers. If you look at the second E uh, number, it says two out of sixty-one, and that is the amount of entities that the game has to draw around you. And that's, uh, for the most part, it's mobs, but it's also dropped items and stuff. Um, but we could we could isolate just how many are mobs, because right now we have 63. So that's a combination of, uh, you know, various drawn entities, uh, items, and these passive mobs right now. So, But if we switch to any difficulty setting, we're going to see it jump significantly. We go from 63 to 150. 149. So you can see there's there's quite a few hostile mobs, and now you can see they spawned all over the place. Um, it might be a little bit hard to see unless you're watching in the, in 720, um, and if you haven't, you probably you should be watching in, in 720p. So it'll be easier. I'm using F3 to look at the mobs right now, and I see uh, 15 mobs. You can see it says E 15, 14 out of. Uh, well, 15 out of 141. And those are all mobs down there. And some of them are almost all the way down towards uh, towards the bedrock at this point. So you can tell that these chunks are active all the way down to the uh, the bottom of, uh, of, of the map, basically. Alright, so all of that um, I'm using to illustrate what's called the mob cap. Now there's only a certain amount of mobs that can be spawned in the world at any one time. Uh, there's debate on how much it is, but for hostiles it's around 80. Um, and as you can see we did it, it was like 140 minus 62, so yeah, something like that, around 80. Um, passives, it's between 15 and 20, and people say squid is like 5. But it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, sometimes when you're, especially when you're traveling, when you're walking, you know, long distances, uh, you can see a lot more mobs than the cap. I, I don't know exactly why that happens, but if you ha if I had a guess, the uh, the chunks behind me really haven't unloaded and despawned their mobs yet, but the chunks ahead of me are still spawning them. So sometimes that's why I see like uh, you know 10 or 15 squid and over the cap of what should be five, right? Um, so that's more or less how that works. And the reason the mob cap is important is because, uh, especially in your hostile mob systems, if you have mobs that are just standing there, standing around and not dying, they're not falling into the trap or whatnot, uh, you got problems because they're just taking up mob space. 
And similarly, uh, with caves underneath your mob systems and all that sort of stuff, that's those are mobs that are not in your trap. Those are mobs that are not giving you loot. And they're just going to sit there until they despawn, taking, and they're going to take up space. So, you know, that's one less mob that's going to spawn in your trap. So you have to clear the caves. Very important whenever you're doing a, uh, a hostile mob system. And the same for a passive mob system, you have to clear all the grass around you. Alright, so to end this, we're gonna I'm gonna give you a simplified explanation of how the spawn loop works and how the despawn thing works to the best of my ability. Um, basically, uh, pretty much all the time the game is looking to spawn new mobs. And what it tries to do is it takes a random chunk and uh, that's active around you and it takes a random location in that random chunk and tries to spawn a group of mobs there. Now mobs generally spawn in groups of four. Um, it depends on how much space is available for them to spawn however. Um, some mobs will spawn differently like gas spawn by themselves uh, in the nether one at a time and uh, wolves will spawn in, in packs of eight and I think squid I can't remember if squid spawn in packs, I think they do, probably like four. But uh, if the game has enough room to spawn for the mobs, it will. But say, like, uh, it only had this much room, it would only spawn maybe one or two mobs. And if that, um, that part of the chunk is not suitable for mob spawn, say it's right in the middle of the sky or, you know, it's in the middle of a mountain, then it's obviously not going to spawn there. <clears throat> and what happens in that case is it just skips that and moves on and tries to spawn them somewhere else. Now that's a really pretty moonrise, isn't it? This is a really cool seed. I like this. But uh, let's uh, go over the despawn code really quickly. Now the way it works with uh, despawning is uh, if a mob is outside that uh, that diameter of 128 blocks, you know, that 17 by 17 chunk area, they'll uh, eventually despawn. But also, if a mob is uh, more than 32 blocks away from you, it's eventually going to despawn as well. Um, it will take longer, but it will despawn. It's like, I think the average lifespan of a mob that's more than 32 blocks away from you is like 1 to 2 minutes. Something like that. So, that's something to take in consideration with your, your mob systems. You never really want to make them too far away from, uh, from where you're going to collect the loot. Um, Unless your mob system is very efficient and you really don't have to worry about, you know, that that uh that despawn time. Uh, let's see, mobs only will despawn if they are standing still. So if they're chasing you or you know that kind of thing, or they're moving around, uh, they will not despawn. You know, obviously. And uh, yeah, so I think that's about it for this whole. Uh, for how the mobs spawn. I mean, it's a simplified explanation, but uh, uh, if you want more detail, check out the wiki. Uh, they actually have uh, excerpts from the code itself, uh, the algorithms at least. So, a couple things. Uh, you never want your loot collector to be less than 24 blocks away from where your mobs spawn in your systems. It's one of my platforms at least 25 blocks above. Uh, you don't want it to be more than 32 blocks away if you can help it. Uh, let's see, uh, a couple of the notes with your spawning pads, you don't want to make them too small. Um, a lot of people have been talking about like 4x4 four four or even 2x2 two two spawning pads. I mean, if your your pads are this small, uh, there's no way in hell the uh, the system is going to be able to spawn a group of mobs on a, on a pad this tiny. No way. Um, my 7x7s seven tend to spawn uh, groups of three or four, so that seems to work out nicely. Um, if I recall, it's a 41 by 41 square around a center point, where's, where the uh, game will try to... Ooh. Ah, fail. Will try to uh, spawn mobs, uh, a group of mobs. And it, it's completely random, so... But the bigger the, the, the pad is, the more chance you're going to get a group. But at the same time, the bigger the pad is, the longer it takes them to fall off into your delivery system, so... Yeah, there's a, there's a fine balance in there somewhere. Now, I forget if I mentioned it or not, but you don't want it to be, you don't want your uh, spawning pads to be more than 32 blocks away if you can help it, uh, because of the despawn thing. 
And with my mob tower, um, these are all in the same chunks, obviously. Uh, it just takes advantage of the vertical space. Uh, obviously, some of the higher uh, platforms are more than 32 blocks away, so those mobs would despawn after a while. But they generally fall down and die uh, before they despawn. Because remember, they only despawn if they're not moving. And if they're being pushed by water or uh, whatever, they're falling, they, they can't despawn, so that seems to work just fine. Uh, I think I think that's what all I wanted to cover. Uh, I'm sure I've forgotten things, I'm sure I've gotten things wrong, but uh, leave some comments or send me some messages if you have individual questions, because I mean, the this subject is very complex, and I can't really answer all of it in one video. Um, but I wanted to get this out today. Um, so this is a rather rushed attempt at, uh, at doing this. I want to get it out today because I'm not quite sure if I'm going to have power for the next few days because Hurricane Irene is about to kick my ass up here. So um, I hopefully will see you guys uh, tomorrow. If not, then I'll probably see you early in the week uh, with some more videos. So this is Drackle, uh signing off.